Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be looking at the 2012 EVPM Paper 2 um, question paper on letters. I have that letter in front of me and we are going to go through the letter to see what exactly should be done before we start our typing. Now, when you are given a letter, one of the first things that you need to do, and you are given time to do this in the exam, is to ensure that you read through the entire document first to get a gist of what the question is saying before you start your typing. So you're going to read through, make your little jottings here and there, and then once you're through, you start your typing. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this simply because many a times there are things at the end of the letter that should be at the beginning of the letter. There are things at the end of the letter that should be in the middle of the letter, etc. And as such, to get the holistic view of what the question is saying, you need to read through the entire question before you start your typing. Now I have this paper in front of me and we're going to go through it together. And one of the key things in EDPM, and you'll find that in letters, is that of manuscript signs, and abbreviations all right and you need to ensure that you know your manuscript signs and if you see your abbreviations you expand on them all right because you're getting marks for that or you lose marks if you do not do that and one of the things that CXC has on the list of items to be tested this year is that of manuscript signs so here is a letter it says create a suitable letterhead for the following company and insert an appropriate logo. And it gives you the information that you're going to use to do the letterhead, which is very simple. All right, I have a video on letterhead and I can link that above for you to know exactly how to construct your letterhead, right? But there is the information that you need for the letterhead and then it says you should find an appropriate logo to insert, all right? Following that, it says be on the letterhead created, type, the following letter in block style to Miss Charmaine McLean to Belvedere Crescent, Castro's St. Lucia. Now, the letterhead should be in the header of the document. And I can't emphasize that enough and I've taught how to do that. All right. And so once you come out of the letterhead, then you start your typing with your letter. It says that this letter should be in the blocked style and note that the block style with the block style, everything is flushed to the left margin. Okay? Everything is flushed to the left margin and there is closed punctuation that is used. So it simply means that punctuation marks are used in the body of the letter, right? Before the salutation and after the um, complimentary close, we do not use any punctuation. It says we should mark the letter confidential. And when we mark a letter confidential or private, etc., that information or urgent, right, is placed above the inside address. Okay, and then it says we need a reference. It says a ref it gives us information for the reference and says that we should end the reference with your initials. I've seen students in tests, instead of putting their initial, they write the words your initials. Please do not do that, all right? If your name is Susan Hall, it will be S-H, okay? All right, it says that once we do that, we should save the letter and print, okay? But you'll be given instruction as to this aspect. Now, here is the letter. It says, many people dream of home ownership, but most are unaware of the considerable effort. And then I see this sign here. Now, this sign means transpose, means to turn around, right? And so I'm going to switch from them to it requires. So it requires will come first and from them will go after. So it should read of the considerable effort it requires for them, from them rather, to make their dream a reality. How can they be sure they are not biting off more than they can chew? It is after all the biggest, and here I have transposition again, all right? Um, and this is financial decision. So we switch it around. So it is after all the biggest financial decision they may make in their lives. Now I see not to mention and that is crossed out and I see this sign here to the left. Now that means delete. 
There are more than one signs that we can use, but this one is for delete. All right, delete has more than one um, symbols. Now it says, yet for the majority, whether buying or building, the process is fraught with stress. And then I see this um, kind of bracket here in front of the T for two, right? And then when I look into the margin, I see NP. Now that is a symbol for a new paragraph. So this information should go in another paragraph. Okay, it says to avoid disappointment when buying a home, it is important that, and I see the U here, many of you that does the text messaging does a short and thing, and that is what we have here. But this should be written out in full, Y-O-U. You become an informed buyer. One of the things you must do is to make a checklist. And then I see a balloon with an arrow. All right, it's, it means that this information should be inserted here. It says, this will greatly increase your chances of success, full stop. All right, then I go to the next line and I see that bracket again with NP, which means that this is a new paragraph. I see this O being crossed out and a smaller O written above, which means that that information, right, should be in lowercase. All right, a lowercase o, and then I see an arrow that is pointing here. Let me follow that arrow to here. It says, I enclosed, and they cross off the, um, that latter part. So it should read, I enclose a copy of, and that should go before. So this new paragraph should read, I, let me go down, I enclose a copy of our step-by-step -step guide. The G is underlined, and when I look to the right, I see UC. UC means uppercase, so this should be a capital G. And I hope that when you're going through your document, you'll look out for these things, guys, because if you have an inconsistency, if you have one thing wrong two times, two or more times, you do you lose mark for it. So if something should be capitalized and you do not capitalize it or it should be in lowercase, you do not put it, you lose mark for um, capitalization, okay? So this is a step-by-step -step guide. Now, which will help you navigate the maze of, and I see two things here, and please note this. I see legal work and it's crossed out with some dotted lines underneath, and I see the word negotiations, and I see that being crossed out as well. Which one do I use? Now, the one with the dotted line underneath it is the manuscript sign for what is called STET, S-T-E-T, -E and that means to leave unchanged right? Or leave as is. And so it means that out of the two, anyone that you see with the, dot, the dotted lines or the unbroken lines under it, that is the one that you're going to type back when you're typing. So it should read, which will help you navigate the maze of legal work and negotiations and find the best mortgage terms. And then I see this symbol here, going on. Now that is a manuscript symbol or a sign that means run on. So it means that this sentence in it you should go beside what is up here. All right. And it's a capital I says another sentence. Terms full stop. So this is another sentence. Should read in it you WL will find and then you have the colon. All right. Let me go down. All right. So you will find and then colon, and it says, how to calculate your price range. The H is underlined, meaning lowercase. There should be a lowercase H. How to calculate your price range. How much you should, SHD, is the abbreviation for the word should, borrow, full stop. This will depend on your deposit and how much you earn. All right, semicolon. And the legal and administrative work conveyance associated with transferring ownership to you. Then I see this instruction here. Typist, set these three topics out as a bulleted list, please. All right, so the information here should be written as a bulleted list. All right, so we're going to put it as an enumeration or an inset. It doesn't specify which one. But more times, if it didn't, we just use enumeration. All right, so we're going to put these three things as enumerated items. All right. And then we move on. It says, make this the last paragraph. So all of this information will go as the last paragraph. So I'm going to leave that 
You see the importance of reading through. I'm going to leave that because sometimes you you don't read through and then when they get you, you start typing this information only to realize that it should go at the end. So I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to read it and come back to it at the end. It says, in addition, if you, Y-O-U, are planning to build your Y-R, Y-O-U, it should be your dream house, there are sections devoted to building a house, house building tips, and how to find a contractor. You will find these invaluable. Take note of the general tips on choosing the right building materials and how to ensure that your electrical installations are conveniently placed. All right, so we are on the second page. It says T, meaning typist, after the words chances of success, on the previous page, insert the following. All right, and I think chances of success was at the top. All right, here it is. This will in greatly increase your chances of success, which will be placed here. So the information will come before this new paragraph here. All right, so what should we write? It says, be especially aware of gazumpin. And this, everything in this balloon should be inserted. That is a sign meaning insert should come after gazumping before the full stop, where the seller accepts an offer from you, but then accepts a higher price from another buyer. Full stop, then the last sentence, this can be emotionally and financially devastating. Then we go to the final paragraph, which is this. If after you have HV, have carefully reviewed our guide, you would, WD, like a, uh, and I see the insert sign, so I will look to the left to see if I see something to insert, or I look to the right. And I look to the right and I see the insert symbol with the word further. All right? So it should read, you would like a further personal consultation with one of our agents. Please do not hesitate to telephone me. I look forward, FWD, forward to a mutually rewarding business relationship. All right, and that is the end. Then what should we do? It says, yours sincerely, YRS, yours sincerely, Marcus Senhouse, and that should be in all capital letters, Marcus Senhouse, Managing Director. And look at it. Look right here now. The subject heading is buying a home. Now, the subject heading should come after the salutation, and here is the subject heading at the end. What if we did not read through the entire document? We would have left out our subject heading, right? And so this is our subject heading, which should go immediately after our, well, it's not here, but our salutation, all right? So that is a letter in its entirety. We now have to type this letter knowing the blocked style format of a letter. Knowing the blocked style letter of um, format of a letter. And as such, I'm going to link that video here. You can watch that video to get a better understanding of how to do the block style letter. All right. Now I'm going to go to Microsoft Word. I would have had that letter typed already. Now I have to the top right. I just made up a candidate number here. That is all. When you go in the exam, you will need to um, head up. Right. So you're not using your name in the exam. You're not a name, but rather a number. All right, we mark numbers, not names. So you're gonna know you need to know your candidate number, and that's what you're gonna put on your paper. But the instruction will be given to you by your invigilator. Now here I am in the letter head or in the header. I have placed my letter head. It gave me the information to put there along with it's told me to find a decent logo, and that's this is the one I chose. All right. Now with the block style letter again, as I said, everything is flushed to the left margin. No punctuation is used before and after the body of the letter. And the date has a specific format. It is written day, month, year. All right. And I remember they gave me the reference and told me to use my initials. And there is my initial, not the word your initials, but rather my initials. It said that the letter should be, let me go up a bit in size. All right, it says that the letter should be marked confidential, and this is where you'll put it. All right, back in the days, I saw persons, or maybe I used to teach persons when I just started learning about the subject to do a watermark across the page with the word confidential. That could never be further from the truth. That was so wrong. All right, so here it is the word confidential being here. All right, then we have the person's information that was given, Miss Charmaine McLean. All right, also. 
the salutation, dear Miss McLean. Remember, we do not put the person's entire name in the salutation, but rather their title and their surname. Then I have my subject heading. Note, I do not write the word subject. All right? The subject heading speaks for itself. All right? I have chosen to put mine in initial caps and underline, although the question didn't say whether I should put it in all caps or initial caps. So that would be your preference. Then I type the letter according to the instructions that were given. All right, here are my three bulleted items in enumeration, typed in single line spacing with a double space between. All right, um, going down. Here I am on my page two, and my page two is headed in the block style format. All right, two, the name of the person that the thing is addressed to, and the date. I think I see something wrong here. I have M-I-S-S -S versus M-S. All right, um, I, I will not go back to the question, but for this, I'll just put in my SS. All right, so that is it. And then bear in mind that it is double space between and a triple space after. All right, and as I hit the page, I start typing the rest of my document. All right, um, so here, and then you get marks for how you end your page one and start your page two. All right, the page two must have at least a paragraph right a couple lines of sentences well you cannot have a page to it only this portion okay so this is it between your complementary clause and your um the designation it is four to six spaces all right i have five there now something that what we did not read about a while ago is the enclosure now the letter says i enclose a copy of our step-by-step -step guide so as it relates to the enclosure the question may not at all times tell you to put it but if you wrote in the body of the letter i enclose or i have attached you must have that at the end to say to the person to whom the letter is being sent that something else should be accompanied with that document and you get a mark for that most of the times all right and that's it for the letter that is it for the letter. I do hope you understand what took place here today. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please comment below. Let me know how much you have learned from this letter. And also, please share it with someone else who you think may benefit from the content. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and be a part of my EDPM family. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next video as I seek at each time to make EDPM simple.